When it comes to stellar evolution, you have to consider biochemistry in regards to the theory of stellar metamorphosis. So I went to the public library and got this children's book. I could say it's more or less a middle school reading level book on biochemistry. And I noticed something in particular, the cell with its organelles and all its organization and the membranes of the material. And I thought to myself because, well, a lot of people were like, well, you have to replicate something, you know, to where something replicates over and over and over again safely and it, there's no mistakes. That way you can begin the process of, you know, life evolution. But before you do that even, you have to have membranes. You have to be able to protect the material. You have to make sure that the material can filter the bad stuff out and bring in the good stuff. So the way I thought of it was, well, since evolution begins inside of a young star, I would like to go to more or less the red dwarf stages where the star becomes fully convective and begins core formation. And then I looked up uh, things such as a double layer. Now a double layer in this regard is to interfacial double layers but it can also be called electrical double layers. It says here, it is a structure that appears on the surface of an object when it is exposed to a fluid. In this case, it's a plasma. The object might be a solid particle, a gas bubble, a liquid droplet, or a porous body. The double layer refers to two parallel layers of charge surrounding the object. The first layer, the surface charge, either positive or negative, comprises ions adsorbed onto the object due to chemical interactions. The second layer is composed of ions attracted to the surface charge via the Coulomb force, electrically screening the first layer. The second layer is loosely associated with the object. It is made up of free ions that move in the fluid under the influence of electrical attraction and thermal motion rather than being firmly anchored. It is called the diffuse layer says here as well, interfacial DLs are most apparent in systems with a large surface area to volume ratio, such as a colloid or porous bodies with particles of pores respectively on the scale of micrometers to nanometers. However, DLs are important to other phenomena such as the electrochemical behavior of electrodes, so it's majorly important when it comes to stellar evolution, and this is the beginning of life formation. DLs play a fundamental role in many everyday substances. For instance, homogenized milk exists only because fat droplets are covered with a double layer that prevents their coagulation into butter. DLs exist in practically all heterogeneous fluid-based systems such as blood, paint, ink, ceramic, and cement slurry. The DL, is also, the DL is also closely related to electrokinetic phenomenon and electroacoustic phenomenon. I think uh, the formation of life since it happens during early, or the beginnings of life happen early during the red dwarf stages, maybe even orange dwarf stages of stellar evolution, that it's a, an electrokinetic and an electrical phenomenon. And being that the plasma is very, uh, it's, it's very charged, it's full of ions and electrons and things like that, I would actually suppose that you should look for those types of organizational structures first, which then break off and piecemeal themselves into cell type configurations, which then get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they form more and more complex structures, such as cell membranes. And membranes, these are selective barriers that allow some things to pass through, but stops others. Some things may be molecules, ions, or other small particles. Basically, biological membranes and things like that are the essential structure when it comes to uh, the beginnings of life. You have to form the membranes so the membranes can protect whatever it is was formed. That way it doesn't, you know, go out willy-nilly and get destroyed. But, uh, basically that's it. I believe when it comes to life evolution, you have to get membranes formed first, and that's an electrokinetic process as well as it involves double layers. So cell evolution starts out, or, or life formation starts out with really, really, really small particles, uh, sin single atoms and molecules combining together inside of young stars. 
where the atmosphere is really thick and it's full of ionized material and material that can act as electrodes and things like that. Which uh, leads me to my last point. How this says, this says here how life could evolve in a red dwarf star system. They place the the evolution of life as mutually exclusive of the star. It's not life evolves simultaneously as the star cools and dies and forms the life hosting star, which is you know called the planet. So essentially, it's very very new still, even though it's been four years. And if any of my readers want to go and look at any kind of literature that has anything to do with the star actually forming the life inside of it as it cools and dies, they will be light years beyond current mainstream uh, scientists. But uh, anyways, today is October 3rd, 2015. Hopefully this helps people out a little bit more. Later.